The last four functions we'll look at in this lecture are power functions, hyperbolic functions, exponential functions and log functions. In a power function the variable is raised to some power. The general form is y equals a times x to the r. We'll look at it for x greater than 0. r is the exponent or the index to the variable x. Common examples y equals x squared, y equals x to the half. We define the function for x greater than 0 since for many values of r, x to the r is not defined for negative values of x, and also 0 to the r is not defined for negative values of r. Typical shapes of the graph are these. First, for r is between 0 and 1, the function increases steeply at low values and then flattens out. For values of r greater than 1, the function increases slowly and then the slope becomes much steeper. You can see how changes to the parameters of our power function affect the graph by going to Excel. A power function common in economics is the Cobb-Douglas production function. This was developed in the 1920s by Charles Cobb, a mathematician, and Paul Douglas, an economist, and later a US senator. Q is the output. K is the amount of capital we have and L is the amount of labour. So it's the combination of capital and labour that produces output Q. A is a constant that accounts for the level of technology. We'll come back to the Cobb-Douglas production function in later lectures. The next function is a hyperbolic function. We'll just consider the simplest type of hyperbolic function, y equals a on x, or y equals a times x to the minus 1. Our graph here is typical of the graph of hyperbolic functions. Here we could introduce the term asymptote. An asymptote of a curve is a line such that the distance between the curve and a line approaches zero as they tend to infinity. Here we can see the x-axis and the y-axis are asymptotic for our function. As x increases to infinity, the function is 1 over infinity. So if f of x approaches 0, our graph will approach the x-axis. Similarly, when x approaches 0, we'll be dividing 1 by a very small number, and so the value of our function approaches plus infinity. And similarly for the, the third quadrant. While the power function has a variable raised to a constant power, an exponential function has a constant raised to the power that varies. In other words, the variable is the exponent. As we'll see later, the exponent can also be a function. Exponential functions are often used to model growth and or decay in populations, so the variable is time, t. Uppercase a and lowercase a and b are constants. Lowercase a is the base. Lowercase a, b and uppercase a are constants or scalars. The shape of the graph depends on the values of lowercase a and uppercase a. If little a is greater than 1, the function will have small values when x is negative. When x is greater than 0, the value of the function grows very quickly indeed. The term exponential growth is often applied, somewhat inaccurately, to any growth that's considered very fast, but here we see its technical meaning. For the other case, for a between 0 and 1, and capital A greater than 0, when x is less than 0, the function rapidly goes off to plus infinity, when we move further to the left along the number line, we're dividing by a smaller and smaller number. When x is greater than 0, the value of the function approaches 0 as x increases. So we have another asymptote here along the x-axis. In both cases, the x-axis is an asymptote for the function. In the first case, as x tends to minus infinity, and in the second case, as x approaches plus infinity. Now let's see how change in the coefficient changes the graph of the exponential function. So here we have y equals a 2 to the x. In this case, a is equal to 5, and a equals 1, a equals a half, and a equals minus 3. Once again, you'd go to the Excel file and see how changing the coefficient and the base change the graph. A special case of the exponential function is the natural exponential function. In this function, the base is e. e is a constant and a rational number 
that is, uh, an infinite decimal like pi, the natural exponential function has many useful mathematical properties. We'll see one of those next week when we see that the, the first derivative is equal to the function itself. Let's have a short digression to see where e comes from. It was developed by Jacob Bernoulli in the late 17th century and studied further by his brother, Johann. E arises from the question what happens when you apply compound interest continuously, that is, if the compounding period becomes infinitely small. Let's look at an example. This is our compound interest formula. We have our future value, the principal, the interest rate, and the number of compounding periods. Let's simplify that by letting i equal 1 and p equal 1. Letting the principal equal 1 is simple. We'll see that letting the annual interest rate equal 1 doesn't make any difference when we consider that n will be approaching infinity. So with those simplifications, if we look at uh, annual compounding, so a compound period of one year, so our value then will just equal 2, and so on. If we have quarterly compounding, so four times a year, we see that our value is 2.441. Monthly compounding, that is compounding uh, 12 times a year, our value becomes 2.61 approximately, and so on. Weekly what we see as we increase the number of compounding periods per year is the difference in the value from one calculation to the next gets smaller and smaller. So here we have 2.61, 2.69, 2.71, or 2.714, 2.718, 2.7183 3 approximately, and so on. Our formula then is converging, and the number it converges to is E. In other words, the limit as n approaches infinity of 1 plus 1 on n to the power n is e. The graph of y equals e to the x is similar to y equals a to the ax for the base greater than 1. Log functions are related to exponential functions. The log of a number is the exponent of the exponential function for a given base. The logarithm is the inverse operation to the exponentiation. We have some examples here. If we have 80 equals 2 to the power 3, so I've got a base of 2 and an exponent of 3, the log of 8 to base 2 is 3. Perhaps more familiar with a base 10, so 10,000 is equal to 10 to the 4, the log of 10,000 to the base 10 is equal to 4, and so on. Our most common bases that we use are the base 10 and the base e. Because logs are exponents, log calculations follow power rules. Indeed, this is the value of logs before electronic calculators became common. They converted complicated problems of multiplication and division into simpler problems of addition and subtraction. You should be familiar with these index laws. The graph of a log for a base greater than 1 is like this. For x less than 1, the log is negative. We have 0 there. For x greater than 1, the log is positive. The log of 1 for any base is always 0. Note that logs for negative numbers don't exist, so the domain for our function is 0 to infinity and the range from minus infinity to plus infinity.